Welcome to our second example for chapter 7. So we're going to see how the same process we saw in example 7a is used for a very different problem here in example 7b. So we're going to throw a ball off the top of a building with an initial speed and it's going to look very similar And it's going to look very similar to a chapter three projectile motion problem. We have a initial velocity at an angle, so 25 meters per second, and the ball is gonna go over and then hit the ground at some spot. Now, what we want to recognize is that here in chapter seven, energy is not a vector. So energy, is a scalar quantity. So this is something that's really important for us to recognize throughout this chapter. We have trained ourselves, and hopefully your first instinct was to, to break this into components, because we have trained ourselves that anytime we see a vector at an angle, we break it up into components. However, energy is a scalar quantity. That full 25 meters per second is the entire speed that the kinetic energy term is looking for. So in chapter seven, we actually get a bit of a break, a breath of fresh air, if you will, as a pause from our standard vectors at angles, having to worry about trigonometry, all that kind of thing. So what we have started to do and will continue to do every time is that when we draw a picture, we also label before and after. So we have our before at the top of the building. We have our after here at the ground. That way we can more easily tell ourselves where we're looking when we're asking the questions about the types of energy we have. So we have the before and after columns in the little table that we make. So kinetic energy is the first one we ask about, reminding ourselves that what we're saying here is, are we moving? That's the question that we're asking. And the one thing I really need us to understand is these yes or no questions should be extremely straightforward if we have drawn a picture of the situation and read the problem. There are no tricks here. We are simply looking at the situation and thinking about it. So when we ask ourselves, are we moving at the start of the problem? The answer is a definitive yes, because we have a number value that we can use for that initial speed. One half m v initial squared. When we ask ourselves if we're moving at the end of the problem, that is also a definitive yes, because that is the thing we are looking for. There are no tricks here. It should never be unclear whether the answer is yes or no if we go back and check what we have available to us. The next term that we have seen in the previous example is potential energy from gravity. This is asking ourselves, are we higher than we were at other points in the problem? So if we look at the beginning of the problem, we are at the top of a building. It's a 20 meter tall building, by the way, for the height. And so, yes, we are definitely higher at the start. And that means that we can't be higher at the end because that we're asking based on the other parts of the problem. So the potential energy of gravity term really should only have one of these ever be non-zero. Sometimes they might both be zero if we're just on flat ground, where the height difference is the difference between our location before and our location after. And to start to train us to recognize that there will be more terms to consider, we are going to put in the potential energy of the spring term. This is asking ourselves, is there a spring? There is not a spring in this problem, but I do want us to train ourselves to be looking for it. Um, so, Underneath all of the before and after, we ask if there is work in this problem. Is there a work term? We are asking for a um, 
term that is based on an extra push force or pull force or friction or air resistance, and we aren't told about any of those, so the answer here is no. There is not a work term. All right, so the equation that we've been seeing in our slides and in the previous example is that the energy before plus the work added is equal to the energy after. It is a really good practice to always write that out so that you know what it is we're actually doing when you're going back to re relook at all of your stuff in preparation for test two or the final exam. And so for energy before, what we're doing is we're adding up all the terms in the before column. One half, mv initial squared plus mgh plus zero. With the work term, we're seeing whether we said yes or no. Because we said no, we'll put a zero there, but it's a really nice placeholder, at least in one single step, just to remind ourselves that we should always be looking for it. And then the energy after column, we have one half mv final squared plus zero plus zero. Now we can plug in the things that we have. I didn't make a nice list of the given information. I probably should, so I'll do it over here on the right side. The mass is two kilograms. The height is 20 meters. The initial speed is 25 meters per second. Remember that we have the speed is what the energy is looking for, because energy is a scalar, so we don't want to break that up into components. So the speed value here. And then we can um, start to plug these things in. So we have 1 half times 2 times 25 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 20 equals, and on the right side we have 1 half times 2 times v final squared. All right, so the right side, 1 half times 2 is 1, so we have v final squared on the right. And on the left, we can plug all of that into our calculator to get one number to write down here. All right, so this first term was 625. The second term was 392. Added together, that's 1017. And then we take the square root of both sides because we want the final speed. And so that final speed, not velocity, speed, is equal to 31.9 meters per second. Now, I want us to think about a couple of things here. The number problem is done, but I want us to make sure we understand what we did. First of all, we should always be comparing did we expect it to be a bigger number? Should we expect that we are speeding up now? And the answer is yes. We have all of the kinetic energy from the start added with the fact that we were higher up, and now all of that energy has to get funneled into a single term, and so we are expecting to be faster. The other thing I want us to recognize is that this problem is now complete. If this were a chapter three problem, we would be able to get to the same final answer, but it would be a lot more steps because we have to handle all of the x pieces with an x equation and all of the y pieces with a y equation because velocity is a vector. And then we would be able to um, combine the final x velocity with the final y velocity into a triangle, and we would eventually end up with this same 31.9 meters per second. So energy techniques are extremely powerful, but there are a lot of things that they would not be able to answer for us. If we were asking about the final velocity, the angle that it hits the ground at, we would have to go back to those chapter three ideas. Anything where we're trying to figure out a vector answer, we would not be able to do with energy um, examples. So keep that in mind as we see similar situations with new tools. We are still limited to only being able to handle things that are scalar quantities. 
So there's a big reason why there was a lot we were able to do in chapter three that we can no longer do here in chapter seven. All right, I will see you in the next examples where we see the same process applied to a new situation.